Michael Levine. Today I want to talk to you about how to develop a true salon culture. The main thing that I have done in my business, I'll just give you a really brief rundown if you don't know who I am. You don't know who I am? Google me. <laughs> I'm nobody, but I do know a little bit about creating a, a salon business from nothing, from scratch, because that's what my wife and I did. We were two hairdressers and we built our salon company up to 50 employees in three locations and we now have two academies and a product company and we've done everything on our own terms without really any help from anybody else we did it we did it on a, a ten thousand dollar loan we built our business into a multi-million dollar operation by never never hiring somebody with a clientele never hiring somebody with a book how cool is that it took us a long time but i do believe that anything um, meaningful and lasting has to take effort. It can't happen overnight. It has to It has to be a slow process. If it happens quickly for you, it's probably going to disappear quickly because if it happened quickly for you, you probably never created the, the foundations and the systems to create a long-lasting culture. And our business is a challenge and I can talk to you all day long about the challenges, but I want to talk today about the one thing that we did, I mean, we did a million things within this one thing, but the one thing that we did that created a, a company, a true salon company in my city. So my wife and I were busy hairdressers. We opened a two-chair two salon on the third floor of this crap building. You had to step over the sleeping bum in our doorway to ring the doorbell. We had to buzz you in because we were up on the third floor. It was not a good area. It was actually a very sketchy area. And, and in Vancouver where it rains constantly, you know, it's pouring rain and it's dark after four o'clock in the winter. And the only people out on the street are the crazy drug addicts. So our clients worked really, really hard to come visit us. And we were successful in this area, despite the fact that it was a tough, tough neighborhood. And there certainly wasn't any walk-in clientele in our area. So here's what we did. We had this little salon and we started to get busy because, you know, uh, she, my wife was an amazing hairdresser. I thought I was an amazing hairdresser. Um, she was lovely to her clients. I was an egomaniacal um, wannabe rock star. And whatever for whatever reason, that worked out. Now, I actually had a really, really good background as an educator for a major product company. I had been trained by some fabulous hairdressers. And so I had just enough technical knowledge. I was a decent hair cutter. I was, I was decent. I was nowhere near as good as I thought I was, but I was all right. We decided that we wanted very, very strict standards within our salon. Now we were getting really busy, so we needed to hire somebody to answer the phones and maybe do some shampoos for us. And as we started to do that, we realized, well, hey, we really like this person and we you know, they're going to they've gone to hairdressing school. They want to be a hairdresser. We would like to give them an opportunity. So Rather than, um, you know, have them in our company for a little while and train them a little bit and then send them out to the world, let's give them an opportunity to stay with us. That makes sense. So we started teaching this person, you know, how to um, shampoo the way we wanted them to shampoo and how to do basic finishing the way we wanted them to finish. And eventually started, we started doing a haircutting class, a weekly haircutting class for this person so we could develop them. Um, this, this forced us when we brought in an employee to start to think about um, writing a manual. And it wasn't really so much a manual. We just started writing down what we wanted the clients to experience from us consistently because we knew that my wife and I were doing everything right, but we needed the other person to do things right. And you can't just assume that people, I don't want to say have common sense, but they may not have the same common sense that you have, and hopefully you have common sense too, but um, you need to put the stuff on paper. So we started writing the stuff down. We were teaching the person how to do hair, and as problems would, ar would arise, or as, as situations would arise, we'd say, oh shit, we need to add that to the manual. So it's like, um, if a client is late, don't send them away, try to accommodate, or we need to accommodate them, like that kind of thing. So we started creating policy on every single thing so that there was almost no questions on how we dealt with certain situations. So then this person eventually became really great and had our minimum standards and we gave them a chair and then we're like, well, shit, now we need another assistant. So we hired another one. And this thing eventually built until we expanded out of that salon into another salon. And then we outgrew that salon into another salon. And eventually, um, totally off topic, but I had three salons on this, or I shouldn't say I, we had three salons on the same block, all under different names. 
and it was kind of cool the idea of this was that if you hated me over here now you'd have to you'd say oh i hate that one i hate michael it was always me i was always the problem um i hate that owner over there so i'm gonna go across the street to that other salon because that looks pretty cool and that was my salon too and then it's like oh, i hate them over here so i'm gonna go around the corner to this other salon so we actually had three salons on the same block um with 55 7500 square feet of hair salons on one block with 50 employees all trained by us all doing the exact same thing but under different brands it was pretty cool and it was kind of cheeky and i loved it but that's a totally another story but we built those 50 people by taking people out of hairdressing school fresh from hairdressing school and teaching them our way of doing hair our way of customer service we just taught them what we wanted to, them to do and brought them into our company uh sometimes if i was out at a restaurant or my wife was out at a restaurant and we got great service from somebody, we would say, hey, have you ever considered being a hairdresser? And we would teach them how to do hair. One time, my wife went to a store called, I think it was the body shop, and she got really great service from this guy. And she said, you know, this guy was fabulous. I loved him. So I phoned the body shop and I said, hey, do you have some tall, skinny, brown haired guy who works there? Um, they're like, yeah, we do. Okay. And I'm like, can you put him on the phone? And I said, hey, my name is Michael Levine. My wife was just in there yesterday and she said, you were fabulous. Have you ever considered being a hairdresser? And he goes, yeah, I actually have always wanted to be a hairdresser. I said, well, come down, meet me and I'll talk to you about what we do. He ended up working for me for 12 years. And as a hairdresser, we taught him how to hold scissors. It was pretty cool. So that's how we built our business was developing young talent. That in itself is really, really cool and powerful. And what, what that is doing for you, it's creating culture and, um, for me, when you're creating culture, you want to create a team of people around you that drink your Kool-Aid. Drink your Kool-Aid comes from Jonestown, and Jonestown was a cult. And what are the first four letters in the word culture? Cult. You need to create a bunch of Kool-Aid drinking kind of die for you people around you who understand what the cause is and what is the mission of your business. That's what culture is. Most hair salons don't do this well. The people that we took our inspiration from were the great chain restaurants. And I'm not talking McDonald's, even though McDonald's has amazing culture and McDonald's has incredible service standards and McDonald's is the type of company to look to. But we looked to the higher end kind of companies. We looked at the hotels. We looked at, um, you know, the Four Seasons or uh, the Ritz Carlton or um, there's a chain of restaurants in Vancouver called, or in Greater Vancouver called the Cactus Club. We looked at these guys who were able to operate at a high end level with with systems where it seemed seamless to the to the clients to the guests and those are the companies that we emulated and we traveled around studying these businesses because that's what we wanted to be most hair salons we felt weren't doing it right darling don't you go and cut your hair